Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and welcome back to another Legacy vs. Original comparison video. It's been a few months since I did one of these, so if you guys are new to the channel and aren't familiar with this series, let me explain it real quick. It's a really simple idea, LEGO Ninjago Legacy recreates a lot of older LEGO Ninjago sets, so in this series I compare the two and decide which is better. Because a lot of the time, even though the Legacy set is newer and uses a lot of newer building techniques, sometimes the original is still better. So I think it's always a really fun exercise to just take a look at how the two have changed, how similar they are, and then assess of the two which one I prefer. So in this video I'll be taking a look at the two versions of the Golden Mech that have been released. We have the original that came in the Temple of Light set in 2013, set 70505, and then we have the Legacy Remake that came in the Golden Mech set in 2020, set 71702. I'm only going to be taking a look at the mechs in this video because those are the ones that are directly comparable. I'm not going to be taking a look at the minifigures or the other builds in these sets. But I do have full reviews of both of these sets on my channel already, so if you want to go check them out, I'll link them in the description below. Additionally, if you want to see me compare Legacy vs. Original minifigures, I've already done that too, which I'll put a card in the top right corner for. So, right off the bat, you may notice one major difference is the new one is much taller. The newer version stands like a whole head above the original version. You can see these spikes in the back are different too. The original just has two spikes coming out, while the new one has four spikes coming out, as well as a little flat on the back. The color scheme's quite different as well, I'm actually shocked how little gold is used on the modern golden mech. Like there's still bits of gold all throughout, but you can see like there's a lot of gold used here, not nearly as much, it's a lot more white on this one. The design for like the hat covers on the top are very very similar. They use printed pieces with this golden design, there's a little bit of red and then there's a Sensei Wu hat at the top. Well this one has a very similar print for the top of the hat, you can see there's a little bit more red and then this uses the uh, Ninjago movie straw hat instead of the classic Sensei Wu straw hat. Taking a look at the older Mac up close, you could see it just uses this sloped gold piece for like the chest right here. There's two little tooth pieces on the side for detail. The hat above it can flip up and down and it's connected just with this one like battle droid arm right here in white. The cockpit, you can see Lloyd controls with just two control sticks, and there's how it looks with him removed. The Legacy version, on the other hand, has a much more detailed chest. You can see it uses these wing pieces in gold to create some texture, and then like this white slope piece right here. The hat at the top can also be hinged up and down, though it feels a bit more stable because it uses two battle droid arms instead of just the one, so it feels a lot more sturdy and in place. Well, the original is far more easy to knock off. On the new version, this white bit at the front actually flips down, though I'm not sure what the point of that is, because like it doesn't really show anything on the inside there, so, so that just really comes up these Technic pieces right here. But it is an option that the original doesn't have. The cockpit, rather than having joysticks, has this little printed console piece right here. And here's how it looks with Lloyd removed, you can see that there's these slope pieces on the sides, it looks a little bit nice on the inside here. This looks a lot more finished on the inside, while the original looks a lot more like a traditional LEGO set. On the original, these blades coming out the back, they're connected with these like classic robot arms right here and they can be hinged up or down, and there's how that connection looks from the back. The Legacy version however connects these like more winged blade pieces on these mini ball joints right here, so there's a much larger range of motion because you can rotate it any way you can rotate a mini ball joint. Here's how all that looks from the back. The back also has this flag coming out of it with this little sticker piece of I think that's Sensei Wu's symbol right there, and you can see it's connected to this robot arm piece just like the blades on the original, and there's a dragon hill at the top to top it off. The arms on the original have two joints, one at the arm right here and one at the elbow right here. And they're both just connected on large ball joints. You can see they can be rotated any way you want. And same thing with the elbow joint right here. The hand itself is three fingers, two on the top, one on the bottom. They use the robot arm pieces again here to represent the fingers. And the sword that comes in the set can be fit in those fingers right there and then they can be closed around it. So then the mech's able to wield the blade. The arms of the newer mech are far more detailed. You can see there's a stickered piece right here. There's like these different kinds of slope pieces right here for texturing. Another stickered piece right here. This makes it look a little bit more mechanical. The arm is far more detailed too. You can see there's like this great piece right here, the stickered piece on the wrist. And once again, there's two joints, arm and elbow, but these are done differently. The arm is a rigid technique joint. These are probably my favorite joints because they allow the mech to stay in place, right? I can hold this arm up however I want and it won't like fall out of place. While with the way ball joints work, they're much easier to just be knocked around. However, because the weight of the arm is so light, that's not a huge deal, right? Like you could keep this in place very easily. It's not like the arm's so heavy, it's like causing the ball joint to droop. But even still, I prefer these rigid technic joints where I can just lock the arm in place. The elbow joint I prefer as well. It is connected on a ball joint, but it's a different system. So this way the arm can only move forward and back like an actual elbow can. This is cool and it makes for much better elbow movement. However, it does restrict the wrist movement because on the original the actual like forward and back elbow movement was a little limited like that's as far forward as you could go you could just swing the arm from side to side or twist the entire joint around so this allowed for different poses of just like sweeping the sword that aren't possible with the newer version the newer version however does have much more posability at the elbow though so you still can get some range of motion in this that you can't get in the original the hands of the new version also has more fingers than the original. The Legacy version has four fingers, while the original had three. It uses three robot arms at the top for the top fingers, and then one smaller piece at the bottom for the thumb. 
And you may notice the sword connects differently too. Instead of just laying loose in the hand where if you move the fingers it'll just drop like on the original, now it's loosely placed on a little Technic pin right here so it's still held in place by something other than the actual fingers. But you can easily slide that off and there's what the hand looks like without the sword. Both of the mechs have symmetrical arms on both sides, nothing unique on either. Here are the legs on the original mech, you can see it uses a few of these sloped triangular gold pieces right here, these are the same ones we saw in the chest, as well as these more rounded sloped pieces around the front. Interesting building technique here with like an exposed like technic piece, but I think it actually works quite well and you can see those two wheels coming off which give it like a somewhat mechanical look. Also some exposed studs behind that which I don't really get that or why that's there, I think those could have been covered up a little bit better. Because depending on what angle you look at this film, they can be really really obvious. The feet themselves are on ball joints and they actually have a quite decent range of motion, they can go back pretty far, forward pretty far and depending on the forward and back angle, also a decent amount side to side. Like when it's all the way forward, you can't go side to side at all, but when the legs are further back, there's a much better side to side. These legs connect to the waist of the mech right here with these rigid Technic joints. I wish there was a bit of a better transition from the legs into the hips, because it seems like the legs just end very flatly and abruptly, and the Technic joints really stick out. Not a huge deal, they fit in with the color scheme so it's not too bad, but it's definitely something I noticed. But yeah, as always for rigid Technic joints, you can move them all around and pose them however you want. The newer version also uses rigid Technic joints in the waist, though the transition into them is much nicer. They're actually hidden quite well behind the design of this mech while also being quite functional. The waist itself has a little bit of red, which is quite strange. I'm not sure what that's doing there. The original mech had a little bit of red, but this is a lot right here, so I'm not sure why they decided to change that. I, don't know, I feel like it takes away from like the overall golden mech look quite a bit. But regardless, moving into the legs, you can see there's a lot more texturing here. There's just more modern pieces and whatnot. You can see they use the gold bar piece right here. Some sticker designs in the legs. And you can see they use those same sloped triangular pieces, though this time in white instead of gold. The feet look quite a bit nicer too. They're far less flat. However, that restricts the motion of the mech a lot more. Like you can hardly go forward and back at all. The side to side motion is pretty great though. Also, something else that I had totally forgotten about about this mech until now, but this mech actually has knees to some extent. You can see there's this ball joint connection right here in the middle of the legs, very similar to how the elbows are done. And yeah, you can move this back and forth, and that's a knee for sure. The actual posability of this knee is a bit limited because the overall posability of this mech is a bit limited. But you can see right here, you could have one knee bent and one knee less bent, so that's something. Finally, here's a real quick look at how these two mechs compare from the back. You can see the newer version definitely covers up the back a lot better. I think the backs of these feet could be covered up a bit better, the original does that better. But yeah, look at how much nicer the backs of these legs look. And the backs of the main body actually looks quite good on both of them. So, out of these two mechs, which do I prefer? This one's a hard one because they both do things better than the other one. I definitely much prefer the color scheme in the original, the abundance of gold is so cool and I don't like how like how much they stripped away in the new version. The white looks fine, but I, it's supposed to be the golden mech, I think a lot more gold here would have looked a lot nicer. Additionally, the red that they added in here and here just seems a little out of place. The touches of red like the original had are fine, but yeah, I feel like that's a little bit too much. But the overall like architectural design of like the shape of the mech, I think I much prefer the new one. The wings are much cooler, I think the legs like flow into the body of the mech much better. The elbow joints of this mech make more sense, I love how the fingers are on this one, they feel a lot more natural. And then when we get down to the legs, again, there's things that each of them do better. I think the original is far better for posability, this one is very, very limited, but this one has knees and the legs are longer and the legs look a lot nicer. So yeah, honestly, I'm not sure. I'm tempted to say, oh, this one's better for play and this one's better for display, but I don't even know if that's true. Because as I said, I like the color scheme of this one better. And the way the arms and legs work, especially because they're all on rigid technique joints, could be better for play. So yeah, I just think there's positives and negatives of both of these. And I'm shocked how different these two mechs actually are. But yeah, I'm very curious to hear what you guys think in the comments below, so let me know which of these two mechs you prefer, and what about them led you to make that decision. If I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the new one, I think. But yeah, they're both very good sets, and they both have room to improve. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, let me know which of these two sets you prefer. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to see four reviews of these sets, including their minifigures and side builds, you can go click the link in the description below. As well as if you want to see a Legacy vs. Original comparison of the minifigures that are in this set and in other Legacy sets. But as for this video, I think that's about all i got to say. Thanks for watching everybody, if you enjoyed, please press like and subscribe if you're new. I do LEGO and Ninjago videos like this every single day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.